Hello friends and welcome into NFL Daily. I am your host Tom Downey. It is NFL Cut Down Day and that means there are a ton of NFL trades as well. And we've got a big one for you guys. Jadeveon Clowney has been traded to the Seattle Seahawks. Now this deal is still pending the players involved passing their physicals. But this should end up going down there in the end. Again, the Seahawks cannot extend Clowney until after the season ends, so make note of that one. But this deal is done. Here are the trade details between the Houston Texans and the Seattle Seahawks. Houston, well, they give up, of course, Clowney. They get back a 2020 third-round pick and then a pair of outside linebackers and edge rushers. Jacob Martin and also Barkevius Mingo, who, quite frankly might have ended up being cut by the Seattle Seahawks. Martin did show some flashes late last season, but Seattle definitely gets the notable player. And if you're wondering, wait, Tom, why did Seattle only give up a third and a bunch of dudes I've never heard of before? Well, frankly, Houston done botched this. Houston totally messed up this entire process because the Seahawks cannot extend Clowney right now. They have to wait until after the season. Therefore, the teams that were interested in Clowney, Houston, or from Houston, Seattle, Miami, Philadelphia, they were treating Clowney as a one-year rental. And because Clowney had not yet signed his franchise tag tender, he was able to limit the teams that he could have gone to. Miami had interest there. Clowney, though, didn't want to go to Miami. That kind of ruined that deal for the Dolphins. Instead, Houston, they trade away a premier pass rusher. Is he top five? No. Is he top ten? Probably not. But Clowney's a great player. And they get back a former sixth-round pick in Jacob Martin, a pretty decent stopgap option in Barkevius Mingo, and a 2023rd-round pick. Now, Mingo, he's not going to be the guy for you. He, he can be a backup edge rusher, but the good news is for Houston, you have J.J. Watt, Mar or, uh, Marcel's. Whitney is still there, but it's not enough for Houston. They did not get proper value back for Jadeveon Clowney. This is where things sit for their linebacker depth chart in their 3-4 scheme. And I will make note as well, as we sit here filming this, there is still several hours before the NFL cut deadline. Therefore, some of these names on this list are not going to make the final roster. But unless they had been cut, we were going to keep them on here because otherwise... We'd look pretty dumb if they ended up making the team. And we're trying to guessing. Didn't make a whole lot of sense. But who won the trade? Let me know in the comments section. Type S for the Seahawks and type T for the Texans. I think it's a no-brainer. Seattle won this trade. They got, at, at worst case, think about it this way. You add Clowney for a year. You give up Jacob Martin, who, okay, he's a backup. Barkevius Mingo, who isn't a long-term factor there. And a 2023rd, which, by the way, worst case scenario, if you're Seattle, you should expect to get that back via the comp pick process. So you flipped Martin and Mingo for a year of Clowney. That's a steal for Seattle. And if you resign Clowney, pff, totally worth it. If you tag and trade him, you'll probably get more than a third round pick back. That's a win for the Seattle Seahawks, who desperately needed pass rush help, by the way. And Clowney, look, he's not going to be a 15 sack guy or maybe he does but he hasn't been that so far in his NFL career but look at the tackle for loss numbers look at the sack production mostly over those past two years that's really good production frankly that's number one on a team pass rush production so for Seattle who traded away Frank Clark now they get Clowney in there they signed Ziggy Yonsa they drafted LJ Collier in round one we'll see if Rasheen Green ends up being anything noteworthy for them but for Seattle, they upgrade their pass rush in a desperately needed way. And by the way, they kept Jermaine Effetti and Rashad Penny, who had been linked to Houston in various trade packages. Seattle keeps all of those guys. They can trade them still if they want. I would venture to say they won't end up doing that. But for a Seattle team that really needed a pass rush boost because LJ Collier is a late first-round pick who had some injury issues early on in camp and preseason, and speaking of injury issues, Ziggy is never healthy. Now you bring in Clowney to be your lead dog on the edge, coming off of a really a better, I think, scheme fit for him. He's better with a hand on his ground than I think it is standing up, although he's been productive anyway. That's a huge win 
for the Seattle Seahawks. They nailed this one here. Very impressed by what Seattle did. The Eagles had some interest in there. The Dolphins wanted him in the end, though. Seattle is the team that ends up landing Clowney in the trade. All right, guys, if you love the NFL, make sure you are subscribed to us here on Chat Sports. That link there is below, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. But I assume you're all watching on YouTube, so all you got to do just hit the big red button on your on your screen. Hit us up with that subscription. With the NFL season fully and truly here, we're going to keep you covered almost every day with all the latest around the NFL. More on the Texan side of things here. Again, a more in-depth look at who these players they got back. Barkevius Mingo, I call him Kiki Mingo, the former first-round pick, hasn't lived up to that billing, but he can be a guy that can play some outside linebacker for you. I think he's better against the run at this point than he is against the pass. But for Houston, you got somebody back who, worst case, could start for you if you absolutely had to. Meanwhile, Jake slash Jacob Martin out of Temple, a six-round pick last year, actually had three sacks. Frankly, I think Martin is going to be in Houston for a longer time period than Mingo is going to be just because of his age and his contract status and all of that there. But you gave up those two and a third round pick. That's all you got back if you're Houston. That's not a great return on your investment. And I want to hammer this point home again. Houston messed up. They did not do this well. If you're going to trade Clowney, you got to do it when a team can still extend him. By waiting until the end of August, Houston did not maximize their return for Clowney. I put most of the blame here on Bill O'Brien. Don't think he did the best job. All right, guys, so what is your one-word reaction to the Clowney trade? Let me know in the comment section. Maybe it's wow. Maybe it's, it's, it's W-A-T what. I'm going to go with one word for both teams, and I'll cheat and use two words. Producer Brett, don't make fun of me for that. Seattle, steal. This is great value for, 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 the, for a trade for Jadevian Clowney. He go up to Jacob Martin, Barkevius Mingo, and a third-round pick. That's a win for them. I guess win also qualifies there. For Houston, I'm going to go with botched because that's what this process was for the Houston Texans. If you want to trade Clowney, you've got to do it before the franchise tag extension deadline. What this did for Houston was because they waited and didn't deal Clowney when a team could extend him, that nerfed the value they got back. It ruined it for them. Like, if Clowney... Was Clowney did not want to go to Miami, but what if Miami was like Jake or, or Clowney? We're gonna throw you 22 million a year. That might have gotten Clowney to be, to be willing to go to Miami, and Houston might have ended up getting a better package back, or at least would have had more bidders in the mix for Clowney. Instead, because they waited, and because there were only a handful of teams truly interested, and because it's only a one-year rental. For a former number one overall pick who's had 18 sacks the past two years, they got a third-round pick, Jacob Martin and Barkevius Mingo. That's not enough back for a player that Houston thought was going to be the linchpin of their defense for years to come. Instead, he's on his way out. That's not really what you want if you're Houston. They kind of miss having a GM. As for Seattle here again, those were his numbers the past four years with the Houston Texans. 16 tackles for loss, 21 and 16. Those are great tackle for loss production. I know that Clowney has not hit that 10 sack mark, but let's not forget that Clowney is a very good run defender. And that does matter in the NFL, even as it becomes more and more of a pass happy league. So for Seattle, for finding a way to get Clowney for just a third round pick. That is a steal. The big question mark now long term for the Seattle side of it is, do they extend Clowney? This extension, whenever he gets it from somebody, is probably going to be in that $20 million per year range. Again, Seattle cannot do it right now. They have to wait. But even if they lose Clowney, they'll probably get a third-round comp pick back via the compensatory pick process there. So for Seattle, I think they won the trade. I think it is a no-brainer. They are the winners here. But let me know what you guys think. Type S for the Seahawks and type T for the Houston Texans as to which team just won the blockbuster clowny trade.